New bonds of Steinhoff acquire a mattress firm, Sherwood Bedding, etc. Collapse just after the ECB bought them accounting irregularities if you reholding shares or bonds of a company, such as Steinhoff International Holdings which acquired mattress firm holding, in 2016, Sherwood Bedding, in 2017, and a bunch of other companies well. You don't want to get this kind of corporate announcement, even if you read the ECB, that bought the bonds, that Steinhoff's European subsidiary had issued just this July. The supervisory board of Steinhoff wishes to advise shareholders that new information has come to light today which relates to accounting irregularities requiring further investigation. The supervisory board, in consultation with the statutory auditors of the company, has approached PwC to perform an independent investigation. Marcus Jusain, CEO of Steinhoff has today tendered his resignation with immediate effect, and the board has accepted the resignation. After the press release of accounting irregularities appeared today, Steinhoff's shares, which are traded in Frankfurt, plunged 64% in one fell swoop and closed at 1.07. Investors have been smelling a rat for months, even yesterday's closing price of 2.95 was already down 41% from the 5 range in June. And you don't want to hold the bonds when this debacle happens. But being smart, you re not holding the bonds, you sold them to the ECB, which has acquired them under its corporate bond purchase program, that is part of its QE. It would be funny if it weren't he so ugly. Steinhoff you Ripag issued the 800 million of bonds in July 2017. The bonds, with a 1.875% coupon, mature in January 2025. Moody S rates them bath 3, so one notch above junk. Hence they were eligible for ECB purchases. To keep its bond operations opaque for the public, the ECB doesn't disclose by name what it buys, how how much it buys, or when it buys those bonds. But it discloses a list of its current bond holdings, you can download the list here and search it for Steinhoff and Voila. Those bonds were trading at over 100 cents on the euro shortly after they were issued in July, probably under the pressure from the ECBS purchases. Today, they plunged 33% to 56.18 cents on the euro and are down 45% from mid-September. Steinhoff became a powerful force on the acquisition circuit in 2016, acquiring nine large retailers and related companies, in addition to the retailers it already owned. In the U.S., it acquired mattress firm holding in September 2016 for $2.4 billion and a majority stake in mattress manufacturer Sherwood Bedding in July 2017. It got to the point where Wall Street was asking, while licking its chops, who would Steinhoff buy next? But in addition to the accounting irregularities, perhaps designed to cover up some unpleasant issues, Steinhoff has some operating problems. According to Bloomberg, retail sales have been weak, and this Christmas, after a much better than expected festive season in 2016 is looking grim. Add in higher input costs thanks to the slump in the pound, and that some rental payments are due at the end of December, and that could make for a toxic combination. Moody S, in rating the misbegotten bonds, wrote on July 13, with unintended irony, a decentralized management model mitigates inherent risks associated with an ever-evolving organizational structure spanning a number of countries and business sectors, with integrating multiple acquisitions. Management teams remaining post-acquisition allows for a seamless transition, 
and are aligned with group operating performance success through remuneration comprising a considerable long-term equity award component. Now the ECB holds some of these bonds. It shows what risks the ECB is taking by buying corporate bonds. Though the ECB doesn't buy junk rated bonds, it buys bonds that are rated just above junk, such as the Steinhoff bonds, and it buys not rated bonds of undetermined quality. Due to downgrades, it ends up with junk rated bonds. The chart, based on data from UBS, and Bloomberg shows that the ECB recently held 26 issues of junk bonds rated BB plus or below on standard and pool rest scale, 233 issues of not rated bonds, NR, and 84 issues rated just above junk, BBB but these are the boom times for Euro corporate bonds, and particularly junk bonds boom times because the ECB has been buying these instruments, purposefully inflating their prices, and pushing down yields. This scheme allowed a company, like Steinhoff, to borrow at a cost, below 2%. However, the average euro junk bond yield currently at 2.5% according to the buff Merrill Lynch euro high yield index is up sharply from peak bond market benightedness in early November when the average junk bond yield fell briefly, below 2.1%. Investors are starting to wonder what will come next, as the ECB will further taper its bond purchase program. And the Steinhoff bonds underline how the ECB has become a bad bank of sorts, buying bonds from weak companies, and watching how the bonds crash on its books. Fed Titans, and so far, nothing has blown up Gundlach frets about bonds during QE unwind, rate hikes, tax cuts, and rising deficits. A tax cut will reduce revenue, and it will grow the deficit, and therefore, it will probably grow bond supply, and perhaps boost economic growth, Double Line Capital CEO Jeffrey Gundlach said on an investor webcast on Tuesday. And if it does, it is going to be bond unfriendly. And possibly in a big way. It has a strange environment for cutting corporate taxes, as the economy is already in its eighth year of expansion, he said, according to Reuters, which reported the webcast. He reiterated his prediction that the 10-year Treasury yield could reach 6% over the next four years or so. Let that sink in for a moment. The last time the 10-year Treasury yield was at 6%, on the way down, was in August 2000. Four years from now, 6% would be a two-decade high water mark. I don't think it is at all strange to think we can tack on something like 75 basis points, on average, with volatility of course, per year for the next four years or so, he said. The 10-year yield is currently 2.36% and sliding, as opposed to the short maturities, whose yields have surged. The three-month yield reached 1.30% today, and the two-year yield jumped to 1.83%, the highest since September 2008. When bond yields rise, bond prices fall by definition. The 10-year yield is still very low. But if it rises from this level to 6% over the next few years, there will be a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth along the way by bond investors, and it is not going to be a fun time for a bond fund manager to navigate this environment. When Gundlach talks, he is talking his book, and his book is full of bonds including U.S. Treasuries, Double Line manages over $115 billion in assets as of September 30th. So it would seem he did try to talk down yields, which he has famously done before, which would create capital gains and paper profits for his fund, 
which would make him look like the Bond King that Wall Street has called him. But not this time. This time he is worried about the opposite. Growth has accelerated already, and the deficit is already going up, so why cut taxes? He told Reuters in a follow-up interview. It is going to be very interesting to see how the markets can hang on to the easy gains that were made in 2017, he said. It has just so far, so good. The Fed has tightened for times, baby E embarked on quantitative tightening. Fed Chair Janet Yellen is leaving a pretty good legacy, he said. She got us off of zero and she started us on the wind down the quantitative tightening, and so far, nothing has blown up. When things don't blow up, that s always encouraging in these crazy days of ours. And during these crazy days of ours, everyone gets asked about Bitcoin, since everyone is talking about it, even on sports shows on the radio. And so Reuters asked him, and he said that he wasn't d at all surprised by Bitcoin, it s a sign of the times. Like the dot coms back in the day, he said. Gundlach added that he does not own Bitcoin just like I never bought a dot-com stock back in the day. Bitcoin powered to a record high of $11,850 on Tuesday. It is now at $12,269. Blink and it has moved $1,000, up or down. That Bitcoin now gets into everything. Even a discussion with a bond fund manager about rate hikes, U.S. Treasury yields, and the tax cuts is further evidence that this mania has completely blown off the lid of the everything bubble, which the Fed is trying to figure out how to contain. You sold them to the ECB, which has acquired the Moderates Corporate Bond Purchase Program, that is part of its QE. It would be funny if it weren't he so ugly. Steinhoff U. Ripag issued the 800 million of bonds in July 2017. The bonds, with a 1.875% coupon, mature in January 2025. Moody's rates them bad 3, so one notch above junk. Hence they were eligible for ECB purchases. To keep its bond operations opaque for the public, the ECB doesn't disclose by name what it buys, how how much it buys, or when it buys those bonds. But it discloses a list of its current bond holdings. You can download the list here, and search it for Steinhoff. And Voila. Those bonds were tr New bonds of Steinhoff acquire a rough mattress firm, Sherwood Bidding, etc. Collapsed just after the ECB bought them accounting irregularities if you reholding shares or bonds of a company, such as Steinhoff International Holdings which acquired mattress firm holding, in 2016, Sherwood Bidding in 2017, and a bunch of other companies well, you don't want to get this kind of corporate announcement, even if you read the ECB, that bought the bonds, that Steinhoff S European subsidiary had issued just this July. The supervisory board of Steinhoff wishes to advise shareholders that new information has come to light today which relates to accounting irregularities requiring further investigation. The supervisory board, in consultation with the statutory auditors of the company, has approached PwC to perform an independent investigation. Marcus Jusain, CEO of Steinhoff has today tendered his resignation with immediate effect, and the board has accepted the resignation. 
after the press release of accounting irregularities appeared today. Steinhoff's shares, which are traded in Frankfurt, plunged 64%, in one fell swoop, and closed at 1.07. Investors have been smelling a rat for months, even yesterday's closing price of 2.95 was already down 41% from the 5 range in June. And you don't want to hold the bonds, when this debacle happens. But being smart, you re not holding the bonds the accounting irregularities, perhaps designed to cover up some unpleasant issues, Steinhoff has some operating problems. According to Bloomberg, retail sales have been weak, and this Christmas, after a much better than expected festive season in 2016 is looking grim. Add in higher input costs thanks to the slump in the pound and that some rental payments are due at the end of December, and that could make for a toxic combination. Moody S., in rating the misbegotten bonds, wrote on July 13, with unintended irony, a decentralized management model mitigates inherent risks associated with an ever-evolving organizational structure spanning a number of countries and business sectors, with integrating multiple acquisitions, management team's remaining post-acquisition allows for a seamless transition trading at over 100 cents on the euro shortly after they were issued in July, probably under the pressure from the ECBS purchases. Today, they plunged 33% to 56.18 cents on the euro and are down 45% from mid-September. Steinhoff became a powerful force on the acquisition circuit in 2016, acquiring nine large retailers and related companies, in addition to the retailers it already owned. In the U.S., it acquired Mattress Firm Holding in September 2016 for $2.4 billion, and a majority stake in mattress manufacturer Sherwood Betting in July 2017. It got to the point where Wall Street was asking, while licking its chops, who would Steinhoff buy next? But in addition to 